Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Minister. Joining him on stage, we've got uh, Zachary uh, Carabelle from who's the uh, head of global strategies at InvestNet. Please come up on stage, Zachary. And finally, but certainly not least, we've got Frank Salzgerber, who's the head of the Tech Transfer Programme at the European Space Agency. Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you too, now. Join us. So, as I say, we've got a look over the next 10 years. What are the future growth markets that you guys should be thinking about? But a quick show of hands. 10 years ago, we had the launch of the iPhone. That really, that digital revolution driven by the mobile has transformed pretty well much of all of our lives. We wouldn't be able to have such a big conference unless we had a mobile app that worked. So thanks to Web Summit for doing that. So if we look over the next 10 years, show of hands, we'll try a one, two, three. Who thinks AI will be the dominant industry or technology? Show of hands, AI. We got some, yeah, that's a good number. Okay, what about the sort of uh, technology in terms of semiconductors that will power everything, that will drive the communications? Chips, chips that will drive everything? Okay, and third, but certainly not least, we've got a sort of communications, the next device, whether it's wearables, whether it's something implanted, something which will enable us to communicate. Got a few more, we've got a few more. So it's definitely AI that's rocking this crowd. So if I can ask, Minister, you know, we've talked a little bit about the future growth. So this panel would look at the top down, what are the macroeconomic factors as well as some of the bottom up, some of the technologies that we've seen. And Frank, you're helping to fund as well. So Minister, if you could give a few opening words about how important it will be to capture these fast growth markets. Uh, I, I think that uh, we should look at the fast-growing uh, areas and uh, the digital uh, areas that you mentioned, but also uh, the changes that these digital uh, technologies will bring to a wide range of sectors. So I don't think that digital per se is going to be uh, the fast-growing, but digital applications and the change that is going to bring in financial markets, in healthcare, in many of these areas is going to be a, a very important focus uh, for growth. And this is quite widespread. It goes to very traditional industries that may, be, uh, may become very different, much, much more customized, but it goes to uh, other uh, traditional industries that are very heavy like car industry that may change a lot with the, with the possibilities that are open of car sharing that may reduce a lot the demand, but also with the possibilities of self-driving cars that may increase a lot uh, the demand for, uh, for vehicles. So the change is going to be very transversal. But what I would like to add that is quite interesting as well, there are a lot of other sectors linked to basic needs that I think are going to have very interesting opportunities of growth, like circular, circular economy that has mostly been about recycling garbage, but it's going to be about conception of products uh, and how to manage the whole chain. So it's going to be a huge challenge to do that. And I think digital solutions are part of it, but are just part of it. Food industry, we still are going to need food, and people are much more aware about what they eat, the quality, where it comes from, how was it made. Energy, we are going to change much more for electric ener energy, and we are going to look much more for sources of energy that are not uh, carbon-based. And this is a huge challenge, and means that areas of energy are going to grow a lot, but probably others are going to decay quite fast as well. Uh, in Portugal, this is a, a huge challenge. We were quite used to be a scarce country in terms of energy. Portugal was a net importer of energy, always a net importer of energy. And all of a sudden, we are quite competitive at producing solar energy. So when you go for less carbon, renewable energy, we are very competitive. The price of producing uh, solar energy in Portugal competes 
with the low the lowest cost carbon uh, type of energy and technology is evolving so in some years we may be a net exporter of energy and not just of energy of the right type of energy energy without carbon so this changes completely uh, the the way we position ourselves in terms of energy we used to be a net importer and a strong net importer of energy and we may become an exporter an exporter of high value energy because it's energy without carbon linked to energy also mobility mobility is going to face big revolutions mobility in cities mobility between cities and it's going to be a huge part of the competitiveness of countries and the competitiveness of cities cities that don't solve well the problems of mobility both in terms of environment and in terms of sharing uh, creating new ways of mobility and making that people can go from one place to the other in sustainable ways of mobility cities that don't solve well this problem are going to decay and some cities are a nightmare for mobility and nightmares for mobility are not going to attract more business perfect thank you minister Zachary, if I can turn to you next. You, after leaving Harvard, you've written a couple of books, one on sort of China-US relations, in effect, called Superfusion, and one on the leading indicators. As you look ahead over the next 10 years, what, how would you go about constructing a portfolio? What are the issues that you think would be important? So first of all, if I can condense your talk, future growth market, 10 years, Portugal. <laughs> um, so quick quick idea around this, one which is obviously represented at this conference a little bit in uh, the pitch areas and the alpha and the beta is uh, financial technology and something I know about from Investnet. But quick question, anybody ever heard of Investnet? Right? Fascinating. You can actually do really well in financial technology and be uh, utterly anonymous. Investnet, this is not a marketing thing, just an information, is a two and a half billion dollar publicly traded company in the United States that manages a trillion dollars on its platform. Um, and none of you have heard of it, which is, I think, a deep failing for all of you. Uh, but financial technology and the whole space of finance is probably the least disrupted area of global industries, except for in China. And if you really want to look at what's probably the future of how we transact financially, just a quick question. If you had a choice between doing all of your financial lives at a bank, at Google, or at some company to be named later, how many would say a traditional bank? I'll give your name to HSBC or Santander because they'll be really happy to know that. How many would say Google? And then how many would say, you know, financial company to be named later that's digitally enhanced and allows your whole financial life to be unified in a simple transactional way? Um, that is already partly existing in China through something like Alipay, which, uh, if, if you've heard of Alipay, yeah. So we have in Europe and the United States huge regulatory hurdles to this. But I have a feeling that the, the, the very need and demands that are coming out of this room will, will trump, and I can't use the word trump anymore, but I, you know, whatever, um, literally, metaphorically, globally, who knows, that it will overcome, we'll use that, right, there's no problem with that one, uh, some of the resistance that we have in a regulatory framework, much the way we were talking about Uber the other day. You know, Uber is interesting for all sorts of reasons, but in, to the degree that it, it completely trounced a pre-existing embedded regulatory framework is probably far more interesting to me about Uber than any of its platform, meaning Uber basically broke the law in every country, including in Portugal. But at some point, people said, look, there's a, there's a balance here between a law that didn't anticipate this change and a need that everyone is gravitating toward. Airbnb is, is much the same way. So I would look to that, and I'd look to healthcare um, as, a, as a thing, because I think, again, areas that have been deeply regulated have been the most resistant to technological change. Government, obviously, has also been deeply resistant to technological change, and that's a whole other question of whether or not there's a future growth. Final thought, it would be fascinating if we could all come back here in 10 years, right here, have this conversation, and see which of these various threads led to anything, led to something, led to something amazing. Because the, the unknown of, of where you're standing right now and where we think it's going to lead versus where it does is something we should all, I think, always keep in mind the humility of you can feel totally certain you've, you're on the edge and the cusp but the edge and the cusp may lie in a direction you're not even looking at perfect well thanks zach and now so, the final frontier yeah so 
Um, Frank, can you give it a, it's probably little known to people here, but European Space Agency's back something like 130, 150 companies, put out 30 million or so in seed. Can you give them some examples and how important this is to regional innovation and development? Sure, it's 130, 150 per year, you know? Per year. Yeah, yeah, of course. Wow. So who's using space? Okay, who's using weather forecast, telecommunication, navigation, earth observation? Ah, okay, welcome to space. So therefore, in 10 four years from now, not 10 years, I think next year from now, I hope that we have a space stage here. So it's not about only satellites, every second long distance call you do, it's via space. You get lost by navigation if you do not use space. And whatever we do with telecommunication, autonomous driving, farming, this is all space technology. And I give you an example of a company, Fitsai. You heard about them? So this was a young student working for ESA, and ESA was not smart enough to having an incubation center at that time. So he was supported by IPN. Uh, their manager of IPN is here. Is our incubation partner here in Portugal, where we support 30 high-tech startup companies in their incubation center. Not per year yet, but we're working on that. So this is where we believe is the future. And it's not NASA with Uber doing the flying car is one of our startups which just raised 90 million because they have it already tested and flying in April. So I think this is where Europe, sorry Mr. Trump, is first. So this is what we have to use. You know, the Founder Institute uh, CEO announced this year that they want to support 500 new space startup companies until 2025. I say we have announced in September that Europe has already supported 550. So this time, in the technology, Europe is in first. So space technology we see everywhere, healthcare, and this is our job to do it. And this is the hottest market at the moment because it's the backbone of digitalization. That's perfect, thank you, Frank. I mean, we're nearly out of time, so perhaps if I can quickly summarize, uh, Minister, I think this, is, oh, this month is your second anniversary of being Minister of the Economy, so congratulations on that. But if I can say, we'll quickly get one word answers. If you had to choose a sector or a technology that these folks should be thinking about, either in Portugal or elsewhere, and we'll go down the lines, but for people to think about it. One sector, one region, one technology. I think one of the huge opportunities is to apply digital technology to traditional sectors. There's a lot of things to be done there, and there's a lot of opportunities of big gains if you customize if you make producers more close to consumers. Perfect. Zach? I would say data navigation, meaning the ability of humans with AI, not AI alone, but humans with AI, the Kasparov principle, Gary Kasparov talked about this in what he learned from losing to Watson, that, it, that the AI element alone is insufficient, that the way in which you merge human with AI for data navigation, not aggregation, and tools that allow you to do that, I think is gonna be one of the more potent things across all industries. Great, F Frank. Earth observation, Copernicus, the superimposing of four-dimensional data. Wow, that's a, that's a mind bend for that one. I'm gonna have to read up on that one, Frank. So please join me in thanking the panel.